Hello, and this is a, an introduction to the shunt equation. Um, we'll go through the physiological basis for the equation, um, look at the initial uh, terms that are often used in the, the nomenclature that's used, which can often be quite unpalatable, um, and then go on to look at a, a bit of maths to rearrange um, and generate the equation in terms of a derivation, um, and then talk a bit about its, um, its use. So firstly, we can talk about the physiological basis for the shunt equation. Um, the topic of shunt uh, is a large one uh, and sort of beyond the scope of this video. Um, but to all intents and purposes, the generic definition of shunt is where blood is moving from the right side of the circulation to the systemic circulation without undergoing gas exchange. And a starting point for uh, explaining the shunt equation really begins with a um, a generic schematic. So here we have a ventilated alveoli. The blood supply to that is from the pulmonary circulation. So we have blood exiting the right side of the heart. Some of it is interacting and involved in gas exchange with this area here, um, with the ventilated alveoli, but there will be a proportion that bypasses this and is involved in the shunted fraction. And that's what we're seeing here. So we have ventilated alveoli here. We have blood coming from the right side of the heart, most of which will go through a, a portion of the pulmonary circulation, which does get involved in gas exchange and therefore does end up with oxygenation. And there'll be some that's coming from the right side of the heart that doesn't involve itself in gas exchange. And this is the shunted portion. So there's two key areas of flow, really. There's the total flow, which is coming in and coming out. But then that total flow is split into two distinct flows. The flow through the shunted portion and the flow through the unshunted portion. And these have designations. Flow generically is written down as Q normally with a small dot. And you'll see that in many of the textbooks. That just generally means flow. So within the shunt equation, we've got a total flow that's coming in through the pulmonary circulation. So we'll call that QT, and that's what you see in all the textbooks. And similarly, the flow coming out is also a total flow out. It's a closed system, so the flow in must be the flow out. And then we can look at what's going to be the what, what's the flow through the shunted portion, and we designate that as Q S S for shunt. And now looking at what's the flow through the unshunted portion, this part here, that is simply the total flow minus the flow through the shunted portion. So that becomes Q T minus Q S. Now, this nomenclature can, can look quite unappealing when you open a textbook and look at the shunt equation, but this is how it's defined normally. And hopefully, as we go through this using a schematic, we can see that it does come from somewhere and it has a kind of physiological underpinning. We can then go on to look at oxygen content. So the green numbers here, we've looked at flow rate. So we've got a total flow that's divided into the flow through the shunted portion of the pulmonary circulation and then the sh flow through everywhere else, which is total minus the shunted flow rate. But what we really also need to think about is what are the oxygen content? Or what is the oxygen content of those of the blood flowing through those different components? Now, starting here over on the blood exiting the right side of the heart, the content of oxygen is equal to the venous content. And so we designate that as CVO2, which just means that it's the oxygen content, it's the O2 bit and C, of venous blood. As this blood travels through the pulmonary circulation and the unshunted parts, so the bits that are involved in gas exchange, it becomes fully, fully oxygenated um, on its interaction with the pulmonary capillaries surrounding ventilated alveoli. And you end up with a, an oxygen content, which is defined as end capillary oxygen content, which is CCO2. Now, I've never really understood why the CC prime 
is used, but that's what it is, and that's what you'll see in all the textbooks. So that's what we'll put here. Now that's the bit that goes through the ventilated portions of lung, and that's the bit that's unshunted. But the, the, the oxygen content of the blood within the shunted portion hasn't had any addition of oxygen by definition because it's in the shunted part. So that oxygen content just remains the oxygen content that you had before. So the oxygen content within this portion is just the venous oxygen content. Now, when the two contributing components come together, we end up with arterial blood at the end of it all on the systemic side, so left side of the heart and systemic circulation. And unsurprisingly then, this is defined as CaO2. And this is the one that's really important, isn't it? Because this is the one that sort of contributes to our ability to deliver oxygen to, to the wider systems in the body. And so in summary, we can say that when it comes to flow, we've got QT, which is total flow. We've got QS, which is the flow through the shunted portion of the pulmonary circulation. And then we've got this term here, which is just saying the difference between total flow and the shunted flow must be the flow through everywhere else, namely the um, flow through the pulmonary circulation, which is uh, involved with gas, gas exchange, where you've got um, VQ matching. And then when it comes to oxygen content, we say that we've got three distinct levels of oxygen, as it were. We've got the lowest, which is um, venous oxygen content coming into the right side of the heart. The highest, which is the fully oxygenated um, blood that's at the end of its pulmonary capillary, a pulmonary capillary that is involved in um, gas exchange. And then you've got a combination of the two, so contributions from the venous content and the end capillary oxygen content, which gives us our final arterial oxygen content, our CaO2. Now the derivation for the shunt equation uh, starts off with um, the concept of conservation of mass. And what I mean by that is that the amount of oxygen that ends up in the arterial circulation, so the flow times by the content of the end state, which is your total flow and your arterial oxygen content, must be the same as the sum of the contributing factors. And these are the flow through the non-shunted portion multiplied by the content of that, which is the end capillary oxygen content, plus the oxygen content being given from the shunted portion, and this is the flow through the shunted portion times by the mixed venous oxygen content. And we can express that mathematically as this first equation here. So we have the total flow times by the arterial oxygen content. So this whole term here is about how much oxygen ends up uh, going into the left side of the heart and systemic circulation. And that must be equal to, due to conservation of mass, contributions from both the unshunted portion and the shunted portion. Now, the shunted portion is just the flow through the shunted portion times by mixed venous oxygen content, plus the flow through the unshunted portion, which is this term here, times by the end capillary oxygen content. And that's really the most important part um, of the derivation. I think if you're in a viva setting and you can explain the physiological principles behind it and then give this first equation, if you need to just remember the shunt equation, I think that's probably fine uh, because the rest of it is just a series of mathematical steps um, which you may or may not be comfortable with. We'll go through those just for completion. So that's the initial setup as discussed. Then what you need to do is first of all expand this term here, so expand these brackets, which gives us um, this second equation here once we've expanded the brackets. We then need to collect the like terms. So we need to bring uh, all the QS related terms to one side of the equation and all the QT related terms to the other side of the equation. That will allow, The reason we need to do that is because that will allow us to factorize, which you'll see in the next step. So we can bring the QS term out to give us this term here, and we can bring the QT term out to give us this term here. And you'll start to see that this is looking familiar. This is starting to look like the shunt equation. And the final step is just making sure that we bring uh, the QT term underneath here and these brackets underneath again. 
and that gives us the final shunt equation. And you'll see that this is a ratio, and it's a, it's a ratio of the flow through the shunted portions of the pulmonary circulation um, with respect to the total flow through the circulation. And that is itself a ratio between the difference in oxygenation between this idealized end capillary and the arterial uh, divided by the difference between the idealized end capillary and the mixed venous. Um, and that's the, uh, the sort of the mathematical derivation. So we've done the physiological setup, we've done the conservation of mass, which gives us this first term, and then it's just a, a bit of mathematical gymnastics to get to our final um, equation here. A natural question to ask at this point for many people is, so what? You know, why, why, are we, um, why are we bothering ourselves with all of this and why this slightly confusing looking term to come up with, with some number? Well, shunt, uh, uh, the absence or presence of shunt significantly impacts on your arterial oxygen content and therefore your ability to deliver oxygen throughout the body. So it is important to be able to try and quantify the level of shunt that's occurring. And the shunt equation allows you to quantify that level of shunt. And these terms here are not just um, uh, theoretical terms. These are numbers that we can measure. CaO2 can be measured on an arterial uh, blood gas. And we can use the oxygen content equation uh, to derive that from partial pressures. The CVO2 is the mixed oxygen content. And that can be measured from a central line. These terms here, so the, the end capillary oxygen content, is harder to measure directly, um, but you can calculate it using the alveolar gas equation. And so and so these, uh, these numbers can be uh, hardened up, and you can end up with a numerical value to this shunt equation. And typically... Uh, uh, 4% or 5%, so a, a numerical value of 0 0.04, 0 0.05 would be, would be typical for a healthy set of lungs. And that's a brief introduction to the shunt equation. Thanks very much for listening.